what started off as something that seems so unfeasible and such just like another idea was just pitched up in the office one day actually happened. This concept was so much more important than us as a media company or us as people on the road as personalities. It was about supporting local businesses, local fly shops, and the importance of telling their story. Fly shop tour, morning one. We're headed off to our first stop at Cutthroat Anglers. Morning. <laughs> this, this trailer's actually kind of sick. All right, let's do it. <laughs> How you doing? Our first stop on the fly shop tour. Harlan. Preston. Preston, nice to meet you. We're only uh, an hour late. The guys at Cutthroat Anglers have a lot of options for different fisheries uh, in the area. We did choose to fish the Colorado. Uh, we thought the clarity was going to be a little bit better, but um, the fishing was tough. Oh, I beat that one. Yes, yep. he ate it. No, I didn't. He, he like, did. he like towed it. Okay, hold on. He's going to eat that again. You see that? Yes. <laughs> hey, it's called a clean release. Clean release. How's this chocolate holding up? They're a little wet. <laughs> That's what happens when the fishing's a little slow. You gotta jump off cliffs. Did hook into a couple decent brown trout. It was definitely not like the fish of a lifetime or the fishing of a lifetime. I think it was probably landed like three 15 inch brown trout. <laughs> Were you trying to sound like a bear? Yeah. <laughs> Holy sh there. Guys, you're putting too much pressure on me. Ow! Those 1885 doors don't have the self folding. They are really heavy. First stop of the trip, Rancho Del Rio. Had an awesome day floating with the boys. Got our first sticker of the trip. His fingers aren't working. He stripped streamers too long all day. <laughs> Looks sharp on me. What is up guys? We are in Silverthorne, Colorado at one of our favorite local fly shops, Cutthroat Anglers. Let's go inside and uh, say what's up. My name is Ben McCormick. I own Cutthroat Anglers. Tell me about the day that you quit your job and decided to buy the fly shop. Uh, I want to say like the first month of owning the shop, I still had my old job. I told my boss like two months ahead of time that I was doing due diligence and I was pretty serious about it and I needed to stop traveling for work. I lived in Denver at the time so it was a crazy time. I mean I camped out for a month, drive up to like Blue River Campground, do like a night or two. Then I would go, I had a ton of points from traveling so I'd go stay in like the residence for a night and then I would go back down to my place in Denver for a night and like do that loop, work till seven or whatever and go back to the camper, have a little fire, yeah. drink drink a scotch and go to bed. The other cool timeline on it was my pops. So he got diagnosed with melanoma like two months after my buddy had told me about the shop. So he came out here for a trip and you know I'm like, hey, I got this thing I'm looking at. And he was like, you gotta do it. He gave me assistance, obviously, and it was pretty like we got to do something together. He had like four years on borrowed time, so it was pretty cool seeing, you know, shop grow together, and we we got to do something together, which was probably the coolest part about the journey was pops. He put he pushed me. He was like, "Don't, don't wait to do this. Like you'll make it work. It's a standing business. Like it has a name on it, has a great reputation. Like you just got to go in and make it work." And it was kind of like all out. I came in with no doubt in my mind that like it would it would work. Fly shops are intimidating. Like you come in and you look at fly bins and, and someone says, oh, your typical tailwater stuff. I remember when I first started, I was like, what does that mean? I think we pride ourselves in giving honest advice. Flies that actually work. I think part of it is, is the people and having people that can withstand 
the same question 40 times a day. You have to really love the sport to, to do it all day, every day, and answer the same question. So I think having the right people that are willing to talk to people about fishing all day, that's our job. I also think we are a launching point for a lot of different directions. You can go south to the South Platte area, further west to the Eagle, you can go north to the Colorado, or you can go southwest to the Ark. And if you think about it, there's not, there's not really another mountain town where you can go all the directions. One thing with the Sage Van is it's got a bunch of super iconic stickers on it. So from each fly shop, we're gonna put uh, a sticker from the shop on the van, make it kind of a tradition. One spot it's could, be cool, it could be cool up here. That's one spot. Ooh. Maybe we take that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I like it. It was nice. Oh yeah. Next stop, we headed to Blue Quill Angler. What's up guys? We're in Evergreen, Colorado. Um, we just made it to Blue Quill Angler. The second stop for a fly shop on the fly shop tour. And uh, we're gonna go inside and say what's up to these guys. A little bit of everything, man. Good to see you. Good thanks to for, see thanks you. Thanks for having us. Hey, good to be, yeah. ha have you here. Right? You know, anyway. <laughs> Do you want to just tell us about the shop really quickly? The Blue Quill has been around for since 1988. It was founded. Um, it's become a local institution in Evergreen. Beautiful mountain community up here. Uh, we've got customers around the country online, but it's been a staple here in the local community. It was founded by Jim and Martha Cannon back then. I was a customer for 16 years before, you know, six years ago I ended up buying their interest in the business. So Pat and I are partners in this. What do you think is the most fulfilling part for, for you as a business owner here? It's our returns clients. You know, there's a lot of fly shops that are tourist based, you know, people coming in on vacation and we get a lot of that. But what we really get a lot of is our return business. And it's that satisfaction and the relationships you develop with your customers. Yeah. The other big part of what we do, and I haven't mentioned this yet, but I really don't want to not mention it is our focus on training, you know, because we run an intro class every week throughout the season. Keep it small to six people. And we fill those up, you know, pretty much as soon as we publish them. We, our classes are unique. There are two sessions. We do a session in the shop where we go through knots and, you know, go out in the yard back there and cast and get them, you know, kind of dialed in. Then they go out on the river on a Saturday with uh, six people, two guides. We go out to private water and uh, give them their first experience catching a fish. So I can't be more proud of our shop staff. Every one of them are passionate about that they just greet their customers and we get reviews you know if you go to our website you know granted there's always more work to do on a website but we have a live feed of reviews from customers so nice. most a lot of them are guide related all our guides are getting great reviews but our shop staff gets them all the time yeah i mean we walked in today and there's i think four people at yeah. the counter ready yeah. to greet us and talk yeah. to us and, and that's in, that's not only in the shop in our training classes we try to that intimidation barrier, you know, that oh, fly fishing, you know, there's a you know, little intimidation there, people a little reluctant maybe to go into a fly shop. We try to drop that barrier. Yeah. We try to make it fun. Well, if you guys find yourself in Evergreen or in the area, um, we highly recommend yeah. stopping in here. Beautiful shop, super helpful people. Um, this afternoon, we're going to be fortunate enough to fish with two of their guys. head guides. Yeah, talk, yeah. Um, Pat's our number one guy, but Chris okay. isn't too far behind. Amazing. So yeah. we're looking forward to that, and hopefully we can find a couple fish. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. We got Dennis here. We've and got our blue quill cool sticker right there. He's got his spot. We're going to need to clean up a little bit of the dirt, but you got a spot? I got a spot. All right, point How about right above the lightning bolt? Love it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Looks pretty good. We went to the legendary Deckers and we fished with Chris Steinbeck. Ooh, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to the water with our uh, guide from Blue Quill here, Chris What's going on? Steinbeck. Yes, sir. Cool. Yes, sir. Um, we've got a nymph rig set up here with a few uh, small nymph patterns. Dry fly rod if we start seeing some rising. Um, Chris was just saying he likes this area because it's got a lot of oxygen coming in from this, uh, these riffles up here. Um, so we're gonna start off with the nymph rod and see if we can get one. We kept working up river, working up river. I'm sure you're used to these trees back here. <laughs> oh yeah. They're probably like your best friends, right? They're probably holding like 200 of my flies in here. <laughs> <laughs> Test down a few spots. This water gets absolutely hammered. With that, these fish are very resilient, but we kept working, 
finally hooked into one fish. We are on, ladies and gentlemen. We've been out here grinding with Chris all morning. He's been changing flies. Man, don't say all morning, you make me look bad. <laughs> Sorry, just like an hour in the afternoon. <laughs> look at this fish, dude, taking off. And for some reason, I couldn't turn this fish. It basically went down this big waterfall that was right behind the pool that I hooked him in. Within maybe 30 seconds, I'm in my backing, and it's down another waterfall. All right, guys, Jared is hooked up right now, and we are crushing down river to get this fish. I don't know what size it is yet, but we will see. I said at one point, I was like, this is my river runs through it moment. We can walk this all the way down here, my man. Preston's camera died because it was, it was going on for so long. And Chris nets the fish and it's like a 16, 17 inch brown trout. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. But we all kind of looked at each other like, all right, what the hell was that about? In hindsight, we probably could have broken it off earlier, but this was the excitement of my river runs through it moment. Just wrapped up a great session with Chris from Blue Cool Angler, and um, now we have the privilege of spending a little time with Pat. He's donated a little bit of his <laughs> afternoon to us after guiding all day. So uh, hopefully we're gonna try to get a couple fish. We're gonna see, you know, let Pat do his thing and observe, take a couple photos. And yeah, we're pumped. Legitimate 20 inch brown trout in here right now. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, people always, they always ask me, you know, it's like, do you fish much? You know, I mean, I fish every chance I can on my day off. <laughs> I like to fish and tie flies and all that. So you can't fake passion. You either, you either love it or you, you don't. I love it. I'm over the top with this sport. I'm blessed to have made a living, you know, doing what I love to do and always try to be a true professional and humble and just uh, enjoy what I have, try to give back, try to teach others, you know, what I've learned. I've learned a lot by not catching fish in my 30 years of guiding that has, uh, I think, improved my game. So um, every day is pretty special to me to be able to come out in trout country and, and get paid to do this. Uh, I don't know what else a guy could ask for. So it's hard to believe. Started at the Blue Quill in 1992 and here I am 30 years later enjoying it as much as I ever did from the beginning. Guy's an absolute legend, and uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna stick a fish right now. I got a buckskin, which is a pattern that was invented on the South Platte 50 years ago, and uh, by Ed March. It's a caddis larva. It's one of the oldies but goodies, and then a chocolate foam wing emerger. A little while ago, we caught a fish, this, you know, about an hour ago, that literally was coughing up worms. So the fish are happy right now. catch that brown trout on? That was a chocolate foam wing emerger, size 22. Do we have one in here? Yes sir, right here. We've got an hour left of the day, so we met up with Pat Dorsey, and of course, he talks about the history of the river and catches an epic trout right in front of us. And uh, yeah, it was perfect. And then the next morning we went to St. Pete's Fly Shop this has got to be one of the top three coolest shops I've ever been to. It's, it looks like an old castle. I think it was an old church. I, I really appreciate you guys coming out and giving the, the small fly shops a voice because, um, you know, it is, uh, I think, important to kind of explain some of the connections that we have with our community and, and how we connect. And I think we're uh, quite a bit different than a lot of other out door activities and I think we need to start to you know recognize that and accentuate that they don't have the same kind of local connection 
that say a fly shop does to its waterways. Every fishery has its own little nuance and who knows that better than the fly shop guys. And we're really passionate about it and, and we learn it over time and we're happy to, you know, be an information hub for folks to come in and get information, buy some flies and go enjoy their time out on the water. It's that information and that you know, willingness to share that information that I think is, is the difference maker. And then we met up with Thomas from St. Pete's. Yo, got my second burrito of the day. Let's see it. Let's we got see Consuelos it. Let's here. This is the sponsor of Fort Collins. This is really about as good as it gets here and yes. over at Ted's place here. Well, you get some fresh hot ones, but yeah, just gotta load up on some energy. It's clean energy. We still don't have uh, washer fluid, <laughs> so we gotta make the best of uh, gas stations. <laughs> we're here with our boy Thomas, and uh, we're we're fishing the lower pooter. It's one uh, we're not afraid to let go. It's a picnic rock. It's the first to pull off in the canyon, and uh, usually a safe bet for some fish. But yeah, let's get waitered up and uh, get some rods rigged, and then. Out there. That's it. There was a, a huge fire there uh, around two years ago. A lot of people think that the river is ruined. It's it's a story of resilience, and this the guys from St. Pete they want people to know the fishery is still fishing well. We started at the bottom of the river, caught a couple fish on dry flies, um, and then he wanted to show us, uh, take us basically into where the fire started. A fire like this affects the river ecosystem right over there uh, tremendously. Um, not only when the fire actually happens, but um, there was a huge landslide um, that happened half a mile down the road from here uh, and it devastated the fishery. But it's a resilient fishery, there's resilient fish and uh, the populations are coming back strong. and. Fly shops like St. Pete's and CPW and all the amazing you know community organizations here are, are working really hard to make sure uh, this river comes back to life, uh, and it is. You know we're fishing it today, and come out here and, and fish it, and uh, go into your local fly shop and support them. And yeah, it's pretty wild. You see these blue waders? Today on the Smurf. River runs through it moment. It's starting again, dude. Oh no. <laughs> Please. Please no. Uh, dude, he's taking me downstream. I can feel it. <laughs> oh my god. This is why they keep me in the shop. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, that's great, dude. It's a little cut though. Got a little sick, cutthroat, dude. dude. A little pretty cutthroat, you know, some brown trout, red trout. You I didn't even all. know there was cutties up here, dude. <laughs> River runs through. <laughs> nice, Brian. Beautiful brown trout out of the pooter, surrounded by burn scars from that big fire two years ago, and a very resilient fishery is coming back. Oh, not the sexiest release. <laughs> not only can you catch fish at the bottom of the river, you can catch it in the middle, in the middle of the fire, in the scars around you, and you can even fish above it and catch fish above it. Just got the car washed. We've already been called out by two people on the five minute drive over to our Airbnb. And this guy's super pumped. Super pumped. And we're waiting for uh, Joseph and Alex. They're gonna be meeting us here in a few minutes. Uh, excited to introduce you guys to them. And uh, we've got an awesome event tonight, so hopefully we'll see you there. When you put on waders and you have a fly rod in your hand and you go down to a river or a lake or an ocean and you're standing there and there's water you know, flowing through your legs and there's birds, those are the moments where you actually understand and appreciate nature. The more we can do as an organization uh, to get those people to fight for all these ecosystems that are so fragile. Uh, and, and us being able to tell the story about local shops around the Colorado, or around the Pooter, uh, around Deckers even, tell the story of those shops and then bring light to a, 
nonprofit organization that's dedicated to protecting some of these ecosystems was where our full circle came together. And we had a mission for this fly shop tour to not only bring community together, but educate this community on how they can be better stewards of their local fisheries. With the raffle guys, we raised $1,221. <laughs> Thank you, Sweetwater, for hosting the event. We really appreciate it. Dude, <laughs> so how was, how was the first night? I mean, uh, the raffle. This is my first night and unfortunately my last night, but um, it was amazing to see the community come together here. We've got a baby wearing a Fly Lord's buff here. You don't see that every day. And she now she's got sunglasses. Yeah. Amazing night, uh, super pumped with the turnout, and we raised a ton of money for a great cause. So, great start. I'm officially handing over the reins of the van and the boat to young Joseph over here. I say I'm handing them over, but I didn't actually drive the van ever because <laughs> I don't know how to drive stick. Um, but yeah, these guys are going to be jumping in. We've got Mr. Alex Blackwell, who we're stoked to be bringing onto the crew to make some movie magic. And these guys are heading to Jackson, Wyoming next. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for episode two. Welcome to Wyoming. This is the Fly Shop Tour. Ah! <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> oh, there it is. That's what we came here for.